Welcome to this short tutorial on the basics of InDesign, Creative Cloud 2018. This is the industry standard in professional publishing software. I'm going to show you how to import and lay out both text and images into a feature article. If you're using the trial version of InDesign, you'll probably find its default unit of measurement is not millimetres or inches, but a traditional publishing measurement called pikers. So before you open any documents, you'll probably want to change this. Windows users go to Edit on the top menu, then Preferences down the bottom, then Units and Increments. Then on the new dialog box, go to the ruler units and change both the horizontal and vertical from pikers to millimetres or inches, whichever you prefer. If you do this after you've opened a document, then this change will only apply to that document. So making this change before opening a document will mean that all your documents will now default to your preferred unit of measurement. If you're not using a trial version, then you can ignore all this. But Mac users, same deal, but a slightly different pathway is shown here. If you need more time on any of these screens throughout this video, of course, please use Stop and Rewind. So that's done. Let's create a new document by clicking Create New. For this first exercise, I'd like you to select one of the preset documents. If it's not showing, go up to Print up here. And when you see all these presets, you can look at more if you want to. I'd like you to select A5, which you'll find just here. And then have a look over on the right. The document's measurements are all here. This is the biggest change since last year. And you can choose your preferred unit of measurement if you haven't already done that. Uh, use portrait orientation. Just keep it simple for this exercise. And facing pages, we're going to do a little booklet, essentially. You could use columns here and the column gutter, but not at the moment. Margins, that's just how far in from the edge of the page the text and images will be. Don't worry about bleed and slug for the moment. Just know that they're there. This is kind of an overhang that you can use later. Just click Create. And here it is, an A5 document. And this is what we're going to be working on to begin with. Up to the top right is the Pages palette. And there's just one page in there at the moment. If this is not showing, go up to the Window menu and just click on Pages. See there it's gone. And then I'll just put it back on. There it is, Pages. And you'll see that more will be created in a minute. Now this is a toolbar that I've just grabbed and moved around at the top. And you can move it around like this by just clicking the little double arrow head. But I kind of like it like this. Click on the black arrow. It's officially called the main selection tool, but the black arrow. And then file and place. I'm going to get a file of already existing text in Microsoft Word. There it is, one I prepared earlier. Now if I just click with all, with all this little um, text around the cursor, you'll see that down the bottom right, there's a red box with a cross, and that means not all the text is in there. So Control Z or Control Z in North America, undo or Command Z if you're a Mac user, uh, and then just try it again while you're holding down Shift. So hold down the Shift key and you'll see, ah, Autoflow's been activated and all the text goes in. So it's only a two-page document. If you had a 100,000 word manuscript, it's just great. So double click back on page one just to go there and then Make sure when you click on the uh, text box and drag it down as I'm doing now, you don't actually drag the whole text box down. You've just got to grab it in the middle and say, I've pushed all the text onto the, onto the next page. I haven't actually pushed it right down off the bottom of the page. Now, the next thing I'd like to look at doing is creating a picture box. And this is a officially the rectangle frame tool. If it's not showing, just click down and you'll see the other options there. But we want the rectangle one. Click and drag, and in this picture box, I'm going to put an image, another one I prepared earlier. So file and place, same commands as we did for the text, but this time it's a photo, and that's of Will Peanut Pan. Now, it hasn't fitted in the box properly, so right click, that's a right click, see fitting and fit content proportionally, click that, and you see, right, okay, this is the full picture. Now, you see how at the top, there's a little bit of space. Click on the white arrow and see how the brown activation nodes show you, oh, you're actually uh, directly shifting the picture itself. And then I'm just going to click back on the black arrow so I can move the picture box up. Not that I have to do that really, but there you go. So the black and white arrow, white arrow is direct selection. Now, if I click on the type tool, click and drag to make a text box. So this is a different way to import text we're going to do now. I'm going to go and open a Microsoft Word file. 
And in that, I've already got some text for the headings for this particular article. So fire that up and select all. There we go. And just copy it. Command C, Control C. And there we go, doing it on the screen. And then just go back into InDesign. And you can paste this in. You can do Control V or go Edit, Paste from the top menu. Either way, there's the text. So the first thing I'd like you to check is that you're still in the Type tool and highlight the headings. We're going to start by playing around with the size of that. Go up and have a look at the different ways you can change the font size, or oh, 36 is way too big. I'll just grab the Flinders South Australia and I'll make that, I don't know, 24 is not bad, maybe a bit lower. So you can play around like this or use the little arrow heads to click up and down or type directly in if you prefer. I'm just going to click before Flinders there and hit the enter key to put it on the next line. Uh, I'll center align this by grabbing it all and going up here to the top middle, just to the right of the middle and using the center alignment. Now the World Painter Pound itself, I think I'd like that a little bit bigger. So I'll just uh, have a look at that for the moment. Yep, that's not too bad. And now the spacing between World Painter Pound and Flinders Range of South Australia. I'd like to adjust that. Now I go to this particular control and if I, oh, look at this, this is way too much. So I'm gonna put it down a bit smaller. Now, if you hover over the um, control, you'll see it looks like leading, but it's pronounced leading after the strips of lead that used to be between the old rows of type. Now, speaking of type, I'm going to change the typeface from Minion Pro to Calibri. See at the top left there. And I'll do the same with the little intro paragraph there to Calibri. And I'd like to justify this with a bottom line aligned left. And then with the author's name, uh, I'll turn this into bold. You do this slightly differently to Microsoft Word. See the option up here? It's the font as opposed to the typeface. I'm going to choose bold. So there it is. That's how you do different types of style if you like, or fonts. Now will Peanut Pound itself, I'd like to change the color on this. I'd like to make it an orange. Click down on the Big T near the bottom of the toolbox, or double click I should say. Double click to bring up the color picker. And if you grab the claws down the bottom here and raise them, and you can find, oh yeah, that's not a bad orange. No, we can do better than that, yeah. Okay, click OK, click back on it and you see, all right, uh, that's not bad. The other way to do it, you can go up the top T, click on one of the standard colors. Here I'm just gonna use light blue, and you can add to these as well, and that gives you another way to do color. All right, the next thing, click on the black arrow or the main selection tool. Click, or well, actually I'm going to move the uh, text box up a bit. You can see how I'm doing that. And now I'm going to click on the type tool and then click in the text itself and go select all. You can do this control A or command A. And you can just check that all the text has been selected after you've made it to, uh, I'm going to make this Minion Pro again. And I'll do it. Um, 11.36, just to show you you can do that. Uh, it's very fine control, even finer than Word. And the letting I'll put up to 14 points at the moment. And you can see it, it's also happened on page two if you double click on that. Double clicking back on page one, I'd like to justify it all. You can see what's happened there, left, right. I get like to get rid of the space below the each paragraph. So up the top right, I'm clicking to zero. Now go to type paragraph just to do some more fine tuning on the paragraphs because I'd like the first line of each paragraph indented by five millimeters and this is where you do it it's a fairly standard size in publishing and then get rid of hyphenate by the way uh, well I don't like hyphenate maybe you do and then have a look what's happened on page two yeah it's all the same there go back to page one double click on that now the very first paragraph though I don't want that first line indented. So I'm going to go back to the paragraph palette and put that down to zero. Okay, now clicking back on the black arrow, I'd like to add columns to this. It's pretty easy to do. Click back on the text box. Now see these column markers here? If they're not showing, there's a way of doing it. I've made two columns of the gutter or space between of six millimeters. Uh, it didn't do it on this page. I'll just do it, do it again to reinforce it. Now if you can't see these controls, don't worry. Go over to Object, 
and down to text frame options or control B, command B. And when you click them, you'll get this dialog box and see how you've got the number of columns there and the gutter, you can do it that way. So if you're not seeing them at the top left, click back on the first page. I reckon we're pretty much there. Uh, but there's one final thing. See at the bottom of this second page, there's one of those little red boxes with the crosses and it means there's text not showing. So near the top right of the pages palette, click there to insert pages. I'm going to put two pages in. You can just put one, but I always like to keep it an even number of pages because that's what you need when you're actually going to print. And then um, when you're ready, go down to the bottom of the second page, click on that box. This is with the black arrow selected. It doesn't happen the first time. Click it again until you see the tiny text around the cursor. Click near the top left and there. Okay, it's all gone in. Now that's going to look ugly by itself. It's just to show you if you want to link pages, that's how you do it. These guidelines won't print, but if you want to see the page without them, go down to the bottom of the toolbox, click on the very bottom square, hold it down, and you'll see the preview option. Click on that, and you get rid of all those guides for the moment. You can just click through the pages and see what they look like and how they come up. So there you have it, the basics of InDesign. For other videos on InDesign or Photoshop, you might like to check out the other options on this channel, Indie Book Publishing with Ewan Mitchell. Thank you very much.